welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Raluca and today I want to present you a player that is perhaps not so well known to uh, many of you, Cuban prodigy Maria Teresa Mora. She was the first woman to win the Cuban chess championship. She did that in 1922. And uh, one fun fact about her is that she was taught by ex-world champion Jose Raul Capablanca. So um, one of the things that I noticed in her game in her games is that she has an exquisite positional style and uh, she has a great sense for the end game. She has some extraordinary end games. Though you won't find that many games of hers, I think there are about 40 in the database, but today I want to present you um, a few of them so you can see uh, how she applied all these ideas that she learned from uh, Capablanca. Let's start with a game that she played in the Women's World Championship in Buenos Aires. Here she plays with the black pieces and we have uh, one d4 on the board, e3, knight of six, and here we will go into a stonewall structure, reversed stonewall structure after f4. Now she goes c5, this is typical to attack the center. White goes c3, knight bd7, develop the pieces, and here her opponent goes knight h3. This move is not so common, but it has a quite interesting idea, no? Because in these openings, in this structure, actually, white wants to play with g4. So uh, white will attack on the king side. So this knight will end up on f2, supporting this advance and eventually the attack. So here she goes bishop to e7, knight f2, and b6. Get the bishop out first, bishop to b7. Knight d2 and castles. So far everything goes uh, according to the plan. g4, white starts already the attack. And here she goes knight e8. This is the first, let's say, important moment of the game because knight e8 has um, a very interesting idea. So first of all, I am getting out of the pawn storm, right? Because g5 is white's idea. I don't want my knight in the way of g5. But there is something else. After knight e8, if white goes g5, this knight is headed to d6. So here she can go knight d6. And one of the ideas of bringing the knight to d6 is that you want to play against this bishop on d3. This is one of the main attackers in white's position. Just look at this bishop. Queen h5 is going to come, then maybe knight to g4. And white's attack looks quite scary. So what do we do with knight to d6? The point is to eventually put this knight to f5 and block the bishop. So for example, here if white goes queen h5, we have knight f5. This is one continuation, quite interesting here. We also attack e3. We don't mind about bishop takes f5 because here, yes, white doubles our pawns, but look at this, we've opened the e-file and then we can attack e3. So we've basically closed uh, all the, the king side here. But instead of knight f5, we also have this idea of playing f5 in this uh, position because we want to take back with the knight on f6 if white takes. So this is the point of knight to e8. This is an, an idea that's worth remembering, knight d6 and knight to f5 if white pushes g5. And let's see how the game continued. Knight f3, white improves her pieces, and now c4. So in these positions, it's clear that White will attack on the king side. She wants to play g5, and we've seen how the pieces um, come into the attack. What do we do with the black pieces? We are going to attack on the queen side. That's where our counterplay is. And this will happen with c4, b5, b4, and so on. Bishop c2 and b5. Typical. Knight e5. And here she takes on e5. Pawn takes e5 and plays f6. Making space for the knight, she will want to play knight d6 later on and challenging white's center. If white allows black to take on e5, well, that's great because we create two very weak pawns, one pawn on e5 and no another one on e3. So what should white do here? I'm going to flip this, the board for a moment. If you want to pause the video, take a moment to think because this is a critical moment for white. So what should we do? In the game, she took on f6, but this is not the best 
move in the position and we are going to see what. The best way for white to continue is to not waste time and not allow black to get her pieces into the game with g5. Now this move does not lead to a force, forced win, in fact with correct play this is going to be a draw. The point is that after pawn takes e5 we have this interesting continuation. Bishop takes h7, so we're not wasting time, we want to play queen h5 and g6. The threat is queen h7 mate, so black needs to play knight f6, defend, queen h3, we attack on e6, but there is another big threat here, uh, besides taking on e6, the biggest threat in the position is to go knight g4. We want to trade this knight and then go ahead and mate uh, black on h7. So this is quite a challenging, sorry about that, quite a challenging position for black because uh, she will need to find an only move and that move is queen to e8. Why is this the only move? Because it attacks g6 and threatens to take white, uh, white's important pawn. So for example, if knight g4, queen takes g6, pins the knight, there is no time for mating black. And here is where white should just take the draw. Yeah, this is a perpetual and it should be a draw. However, queen e8 is not that easy to find and the most natural move in this position would be to defend d6 with something like queen d7. But here we see that knight g4 simply wins the game. So this would have been the best way to continue for white, even if in the end it would be a draw. Uh, you can see that it's not an easy draw for black. So uh, black needs to find some precise moves. Let's go back to our game, because here she took on f6. And this is already a dubious decision, because after bishop takes f6, black's pieces uh, come together, and here she will play for e5 eventually. She wants to open the e file if uh, possible. If not, that pawn will probably advance to e4 and gain more space. She can do this right away or she could maybe first start with knight d6, uh, prepare the pieces and then go for e5. Knight h3 was, was played in the game, knight d6, and here she goes queen e2. Now, instead of queen e2, uh, here too white had a very interesting continuation. Again, if you want to pause the video, I'm going to flip the board. If you want to pause the video and find the best move for white, there is a nice way to uh, get counterplay and that is with g5 directly. The point is that something will be hanging. So for example, if uh, bishop takes g5, we will take on f1. And here, of course, queen takes f8, loses this bishop on g5. Black has to take with the king. And here we have bishop takes h7 with a complicated position. So here we would get counterplay with white um, and, well, keep fighting. But after queen e2, because in this position white went queen e2, black plays queen e7 and... Now those ideas are not possible anymore because the rook on f8 is defended by the other rook. Now queen g2. White wants to play g5, but right now g5 can be stopped. And here uh, black plays the move g5. Very strong move, stopping this idea of pushing g5. Also uh, bearing this knight on h3. Bishop d2. And finally we can play e5. Here white shouldn't take on e5 because taking on e5 will just completely open uh, black's pieces. So let's let's look at it. Bishop takes e5. Uh, but after bishop takes e5, I'm not sure how white can stop the threat of d4. If that bishop on b7 opens, then the white king is in big danger. So this would be very dangerous for white, not advisable. And here she went for rook e1. And after rook e1, e4. Now this bishop on c2 is closed. There is no more attack. 
black gains more space and here she starts slowly outplaying her opponent bishop d1 we see that white has no more ruptures there is no more activity for uh, the white pieces there is no active plan so here black goes rook f7 now this is an important idea that we see here we have a space advantage and in positions with space advantage we should not rush we have time to maneuver and improve our pieces this is exactly what we see black doing here rook f7 the point is to improve the rooks so rook f8 white plays rook f2 as well and now we keep going we have improved the rooks we have to look at the rest of the pieces from the rest of the pieces that bishop on b7 is definitely not a great piece it hits against the pawn on d5 so she goes bishop c8 there is a weak pawn on g4 and with the bishop c8 we are already looking at it king h1 and some ideas that we could have because at some point we will need to open the position or find the right breakthrough um, one of the ideas is to play h5 no and the bishop on c8 is very well placed for that because this knight on h3 might be hanging on some point so we need to prepare that and this is what uh, black does here she plays knight e8 this move might look strange but it's actually very useful because as i was saying we need to improve our pieces we want to play h5 and we would eventually need to move the rooks from the f file so perhaps we want our rook to h7 and perhaps we want the other rook to g7 in that case the bishop on f6 would be hanging so knight e8 defends that bishop on f6 maybe prepares knight g7 maybe prepares knight c7 at some point uh, we will see bishop e2 and now queen e6 the, the knight on h3 now the pawn on g4 is pinned and h5 will happen next here we go white waits and here you see rook h7 she keeps improving the pieces yeah gets the rooks out of the f file that is currently not very useful for black now rook h7 is not the only move of course and pawn takes g4 should be possible and uh, might work perfectly in this position but she prefers to keep the position as it is and improve the pieces to the maximum pawn takes g4 can be played uh, whenever we want a3 and rook f7 rook f1 knight g7 keep maneuvering bishop d1 and here she makes a decision she could take on g4 and this is of course one of the critical options but this requires a bit more calculation knight f2 rook h4 the position remains complicated though white uh, black should be completely in, con in control um, and should eventually win this position white species are too passive but there might be some tricks so in this position she plays h4 we see that she takes the more strategic route so here we can see some of Capablanca's influence she blocks the position keeps it closed does not allow any counterplay for white and then the thing is that she will still have another rupture in the position so she sees that she has this rupture with b4 on the queen side and she prefers to keep the king side closed and keep increasing the pressure this is very annoying to play against white's position is very very uncomfortable here and as you can see she has nothing better to do than just wait bishop e2 queen d6 the queen is already looking at b4 white waits and we are not in a rush to play e5 and b4 but remember what we were talking before improve your pieces to the maximum the knight goes back to e8 and from here to the queen side which is where we are going to uh, play bishop d1 here she tries knight a8 so she's maneuvering perhaps trying some ideas with knight to b6 and knight to a4 maybe why not let's make our opponent think white keeps waiting and now she goes back to c7 and finally decides on going for a5 queen e2 and knight a6 supporting the advance of b4 
queen g2, white has nothing better to do, and finally b4 is happening. Complete domination. Yeah, and here we get to this position, which is another critical moment in the game. Let's flip the board and think for a moment how to continue with white. What should we do in this position? Pause the video if you want to give it some, some thought and let's see what the best continuation is here. In the game, white took on b4. This is a mistake and we will see how black wins the game after this. But it was necessary to go b3. This is very strong in this position um, because it produces trades. Uh, you get rid of that weakness on b2, the pawn on b2 will be a big problem throughout the whole game. Um, and you keep better fighting chances. It's not that you equalize with this move, it's just you keep, you keep your chances. Yeah, you don't have that many weaknesses and black might not find um, the right plan to, to increase the pressure here. A move like bishop e2, for example, just waiting and see what, seeing what... Uh, black wants to do does not help either because here black will advance b3 and I'm going to flip the board back and after b3 we see that b2 is weak and there are plenty of ideas here something like rook a7 maybe rook a2 will happen next um, I'm thinking that this knight might end up on a4 at some point so why not an idea like this no looks this looks very interesting once my rooks are on the A file. We have time with black here. This is what we have to remember. Um, and white lacks space and lacks peace mobility. Also, if we play here on the queen side, notice how this knight is completely out of play on H3. So this is not uh, good for white either. Let's see the move C takes B4 that was played in the game. Knight takes B4. And here she takes on b4. Now if b3, this does not transpose because in this position we can play knight d3. Our knight is very strong on d3 and the point is that white will not win a pawn after b takes c4. We simply take on c4 and queen e4 does not work. Bishop b7 wins the queen. Going back to the game after bishop takes b4, queen takes b4 and now we will see that she will start attacking b2. Queen c2, rook b7 is not possible because our bishop on f6 is hanging, so here she goes bishop e7. And in this position, white plays rook f5. Um, kind of the only try for counterplay here. Um, if white plays correctly, this game uh, will be lost after rook f5, but if she just waits in this position she will still lose because black will eventually transfer the rooks to the b file and win the pawn on b2 so rook f5 she takes pawn takes f5 and here rook g7 black defends g5 and bishop g4 one last try let's say because that bishop on g4 might get active after f6 but she goes bishop f6 keep the bishop closed and open the 7th rank for the rooks to attack the pawn on b2. Knight f2, rook b7. And this is already winning. Rook b1 happened. And you'll see how she finds the simplest way to the win. Because here she's not complicating her life. She just plays queen b3 and she forces, um, she forces trades. If the queen moves away, we will play c3 and win the, the pawn on b2. Rook b3, knight d1, rook b7, and here white resigned. The threat is to play c3 right now. So white will lose the pawn on b2. Now, before we uh, move on to the exercises, because I have another two exercises for you, uh, I want to show you another very interesting game played by uh, Maria Teresa Mora. Let's see that. This is an amazing game because the idea that I want to show you here is typical in the middle game and is one idea that Capablanca made famous in his game against Winter. You might want to check that game out. It's a very, very instructing game. 
So here the idea that she plays is bishop takes f3. Pawn takes f3. And the point is that here we play the move g5. And the bishop will be completely out of play. The point of g5 is to fix the structure on the, ki on the king's side. This pawn can never go to f4. And this pawn will not be allowed to go to h4. So the bishop will be just stuck on g3. And we will play this game kind of with an extra piece. Which is also what happened in Capablanca's game. Here white tried king h1. So he offers this bishop on h4. Um, but he has some mating threats. If we take here on h4, queen h6 will happen and then rook g1 and that will probably be losing. So we don't want that. Here she plays king to h7. It's not the only move, but this looks very solid. Bishop g3. And here another um, good move because now h4 might, might come. So white might want to uh, try counterplay that way. But she goes queen d7. And h4 is not possible because now queen h3. And white has just lost the pawn on h4 and probably already uh, lost the game as well. Rook g1. And now knight e7. She's going to g6. d4, knight g6. Controls the center. e5 is defended. f4 is controlled. And now h4 is controlled as well. And now you'll see that she will start playing on the queen side, exactly like in Capablanca's game. Queen c6, a6, not allowing bishop b5 ideas. Here she loses the pawn on f7, but that's okay because she takes on c3 and she wants to advance the queen side pawns. Just going to show this quickly so you see how she wins. Rook d6. Rook d6 because she doesn't want to give up the file. She doesn't want to take on d1 and allow queen d1. And then queen d8 perhaps. White might get counterplay after that. But rook d6. White tries h4. But nothing is happening there. If white takes on g5. Pawn takes g5. And the bishop is still stuck on g3. So b5. Gain more space on the queen side. And queen c5. She starts maneuvering here. Rook d6 and c takes d6. Keeping e5 defended. Queen c6. Here she starts trying different ideas. She's already in control and she's trying to find a way to win this game. One idea that uh, queen c6 has is play for g4 at the right moment, of course. Queen b3. Now she tries queen c4, offering the queen trades. This end game, for example, is exactly what black is hoping for b takes c4 and this would be very easy to win because white plays without a bishop for example uh, if king f1 he tries to bring the king first we have to make sure that we won't lose the pawn on c4 so this knight we bring it to a4 and now it's time to bring the king and then as you can see we will play with an extra knight on the queen side so the king goes all the way to b4 c3 or a3 very simple win. So in this position, white plays queen a3, attacking the two pawns, queen c6, she defends, and here queen a5. This is a mistake because g4 is coming. The point is that after pawn takes g4, here black gets a good attack, for example, something like this. Here we can put our queen on the long diagonal and then bring the knight in, knight e4, and one of the ideas is to go knight e2 and maybe knight to f3 next. In the game, queen e1 happened, but this loses uh, to pawn takes f3 and queen c2. Queen e3, here she takes the other pawn, bishop h4, uh, white tries to play for counterplay, but queen e6, she's just in time to defend everything, Bishop f6, and here again I like very much the way she plays. As I was telling you, she's not allowing any counterplay for her opponent. For example, if we take on f6 here, the end game, the queen's end game, might be more difficult to win, of course, because white could have uh, ideas of perpetual check. But she plays queen h3. Very precise, trading queen first and then taking on f6, 
the pawn end game is easily winning. Here white resigned because this is just a simple win. No way to defend here anymore. No counterplay whatsoever. Very nice positional um, play from Maria Teresa Mora. And now I'm going to show you two positions. The first position that I have for you is an end game that um, Maria Teresa won with the black pieces. And here I want you to try and find the only way for black to win. So here, how should we continue with black to win this end game? The second position uh, is a tactic, a very easy one, I think. Here Maria Teresa has the white pieces, so why to play and get a big advantage? How should white continue. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this little lecture about Maria Teresa Mora and her exquisite positional style. Remember that you can send the solution in the comments and I will definitely check them out. If you have liked this video, please remember to share, like and subscribe and I will see you soon with a new episode.